for another tool review. Basically, this thing is a total piece of shit, and I wish I had never bought it. I mean, seriously, this Harbor Freight crap, it barely even rolls, the thing's flimsy, it belongs in the trash. So, uh, oh, you thought I meant this jig. Oh, no, sorry, Matthias, no, this is quite nice. Um, I like this jig a lot. Uh, let, me, let me show it to you. Let me start with a disclaimer. Uh, I don't know Matthias. Uh, I just bought his uh, plans online and built the jig. Um, Reason being, for me, I, woodworking is much more enjoyable when things go quickly and productively. Uh, I don't like tinkering around with machines set up and, you know, doing a lot of tedious work. Uh, and I saw this jig and it, and it looked to me like something that would, would really be able to knock out box joints very quickly. Uh, and that was my reason for buying it. I wasn't quite sure what I was getting into when I started it. I had never built anything like that. Uh, I never built gears out of wood or I figured I'd give it a go and I'm glad I did. The carriage is just a box. It's reinforced with splines. It's got some grooves on it to run on the slides and, um, and a T-nut with, with which it's driven by the threaded rod. Very, very simple construction. No, no big deal here. This thing on the back is just a, uh, a little spring mechanism that holds it firmly against this slide. So the basic idea is this. This rod has 16 threads per inch. It's a standard 3 8 uh, coarse thread, uh, which means for every one turn of that thread, this carriage is going to move 1 16th of an inch. These two gears here are mounted on that rod. So this is a 12 tooth gear. Uh, so for every tooth, that rod turns 1 12th of a turn. This is a 16 tooth gear, so every tooth is 1 16th of a turn. So essentially you're, you're breaking that rod, which is 1 16th of an inch per turn, into increments of 12 and 16, depending on how you want to mesh, you know, which gear you want to mesh with. If I then take a 48 tooth gear and I mesh with the 12 tooth, what that means is, for every 12 teeth on this gear, and uh, you can actually see I've got some of them numbered, so if I go to tooth 12 here, I've turned that rod one turn, and the carriage has moved 1 16th of an inch, and that's very precise, because threads have to be pretty, pretty exact to work. Uh, if I then do a full turn on this, now that rod has spun four times, and it's moved a quarter inch. Uh, so basically you can use this gear and however many teeth you have to increment how you're turning this rod. Now why is that so useful? Uh, it allows you to be very precise. Uh, I found when uh, with my blade which is uh, marketed as an eighth of an inch kerf, uh, when I was making box joints just a single kerf finger kerf finger um, the blade is not actually an eighth of an inch. It's actually a uh, hundred and twenty thousandths, so it's five thousandths less. Uh, and what that means is when I would do a quarter inch per cut, uh, I would end up getting grooves that were too small, fingers that were too big, both by five thousandths, which meant I had ten thousandths too much material for the joint. You could force it together, but it was too tight. So I made a 47 tooth gear. So what does a 47 tooth gear to do? Well, it turns the rod four turns minus one tooth. So basically it's, it's turning it one twelfth of a revolution less than four revolutions. And, and that made the difference. That allowed my fingers to be slightly smaller to match the, uh, the kerf of the blade, which I didn't have any control of and uh, made my joints uh, fit perfectly. It's a quarter inch from the edge of the board here to 
the edge of that finger there. If I put this down here so that it's now clamped to the carriage, and then I do one full turn, you can see where I end up. Now when I cut, I'm going to cut an eighth of an inch away and leave an eighth of an inch finger. Then I back off and I move another quarter inch. I'm going to do it again. As far as making gears, it's really not that big of a deal. Here's some that I made. Um, I've not had any rejects. The first one I made worked fine, and uh, they've all worked fine. Uh, this 48 tooth gear, of course, the more teeth there are, the longer it takes to make them. Uh, but my first try on this might have taken me half an hour. Uh, and then, you know, maybe a little extra to put some, uh, put some sealer on it. And, uh, and it works great. Uh, so... Don't be intimidated. Uh, just because you've never made gears before, it's really not a big deal. Uh, just get some decent plywood and a bandsaw and uh, cut them out. I'm going to take a stab at explaining how to make uh, quarter inch fingers with uh, any thickness blade. Matthias has some videos of this. Um, the process is a little confusing, so uh, I'm going to put uh, an additional explanation in. Uh, maybe in, this uh, will be beneficial to some people. What I'm talking about here is rather than cutting this, which is just a simple finger to kerf ratio on blade on the finger joint uh, is is a joint like this using the exact same blade the same blade I used for this I made this uh, these are quarter inch fingers quarter inch slots to start with we want to line the blade up with the edge of our board uh, you don't want to make that cut because this first one's going to be a finger. Uh, and, and we're doing a quarter inch on our example here, but you could refigure this for any thickness finger you wanted to do. Uh, so then when we do a full turn on the 48 tooth gear, we're going to move exactly a quarter inch. And this is what we'll get. We have a quarter inch finger that we've left. And the blade is lined up right with the edge of that where we want it. So we can go ahead and make that cut and cut out the slot. Then the, the tricky part comes in, how do we cut this next piece here? Uh, you don't want to move a full quarter inch because that's going to bring you over to this point right here. Right here is where you'll be when you move a full turn. Uh, so we need to figure out uh, where to put the blade to line the left edge of the blade up with this line right here or what I've shown right here. Uh, and that's what that piece of tape represents. A couple ways to do that. You could just make this cut, take a caliper, measure over a quarter inch, and then line it up. That would work just fine, because once you get your tape set, you do a couple of test runs. If the joint works, fine. Uh, another thing you can do uh, is make this cut, and then line the left edge of the blade with that point right there, and then move a quarter inch. Uh, and use the bot, use the jig to give you that quarter inch um, d uh, dimension, uh, and then you've got the left side of your your slot uh, defined. Now, depending on the thickness of your blade, again, you're probably going to need to make a third cut down the middle, or you'll end up with a little strip or some some trash in there. Uh, so that's why when I'm doing it, I do three cuts per slot. Um, after You've, you've made this cut right here. Uh, you return the gear back to the home position, so you complete the turn. This is where you're going to end up. Essentially, at this point here, you are uh, exactly where you started. You've got the blade on the right side lined up with the right side of a finger, uh, exactly like we were right here. So you just repeat the process. Then you do the full turn. Uh, to give yourself this quarter inch and you're ready for your next finger.
And for those of you looking to build it, uh, the thing that gave me the most trouble, uh, and it wasn't it wasn't bad, but it took me a couple tries, uh, was getting this piece on and lined up with the rod so that it wouldn't bind. Uh, if that piece of plywood is shifted just slightly, what ends up happening is it doesn't match up with the opening for the rod. And then as you get closer, as the carriage gets closer and closer to this gear, the rod is getting twisted uh, and it's going to bind. Um, so you just have to be careful when you're when you're building it and get that aligned. Uh, and you know what I did is I put it on and uh, found that it was binding. So I took this piece off. I, I shoved plugs into the holes that I had drilled and I tried again. Uh, it's really you know that's a great thing about wood: little glue uh, and a little plug, and you can give it a second go. Uh, no big deal. So Matthias, thank you. Uh, uh, awesome jig, great build, uh, fun to build, uh, and works great. Uh, way better than any of that Harbor Freight crap. So uh, yeah, uh, highly recommend, and uh, you guys ought to ought to give it a go.